scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man. That to means something by the can happen water. to you your that the devil can say, oh, oh, go away. Wait, look at these people are negotiating. They took something that they did not understand the implication of. And now they started having a meeting among themselves. What is this trouble we have brought to us? So we would entreat Let's you find a to way of taking it out of this place. As well, the Bible says they gathered all the lords of the Philistines to eight, unto them and, them and said, What shall we do with the ark of the God of Israel? And they answered, Let the ark of the God of Israel be carried about unto God. When you read on, they took it to God. And after they carried it, the hand of the Lord came upon that city, descended upon the city. And started causing havoc within that city. It was a great destruction, verse 9 says. And he smote the men of the city, both small and great. And then the ark of the Lord was taken to Ekron. And when they got to Ekron, the Ekronites started crying, saying, They have brought about the ark of the God of Israel to us, to slay us and our people. So they gathered together the lords of the Philistines and said, send away the ark of the God of Israel. Let it go again to his own place, that it slay us not and our people. For there was a deadly destruction throughout all the city, and the hand of God was heavy there. And the men that died, and the men that died not were smitten with the emeralds. And the cry of the city went up to heaven. Now, when you read all of this, you find out that everywhere the ark of God was mismanaged with dishonor and lack of discernment. If the ark was not neutral, it was either blessing or cursing. They carried the ark and thought it would be an artifact that they would keep. And God said, no, this is a representation of my presence. I instructed Moses himself. And he carried that ark and took it in a wrong place. And it caused havoc. Now for time's sake, when you read chapter 6, and then you go to chapter 7 particularly, the people began to cry. And Samuel the prophet came and told them, he said, look, the reason why... The beauty and the potential, the power, the protection of this ark is not working is because of the state of your heart. If you will repent and acknowledge and, and give up this, your gods, all of these gods of the Philistines that you've gotten now, if you will take them away, then you will have your relationship restored, paraphrasing. Samuel verse 7 and 3. Samuel spake unto all the house of Israel, saying, if ye do return unto the Lord with all your hearts and put away the strange gods of Ashtaroth among you and prepare your hearts unto the Lord and serve him only, he will deliver you out of the hands of the Philistines. And the people responded and they said, Balaam and Ashtaroth, we will not serve you again. We will serve the Lord only. And he gathered them together. And the Bible lets us know that when they got to Mizpah, the news got among the Philistines. That these people had come again. But they did not know that the state of their hearts were now correct. And so the Philistines came as before. Don't mind the act that they had. Didn't they have it before? It did not work. This time around there was utter defeat. They defeated the Philistines and chased them down. Because their hearts were right. You see why we took our time to deal with the desire of David. The presence of God. Desiring the presence of God has implications the bible records that there was great defeat for the philistines and the cities which the philistines had taken from israel 
were restored, verse 14 says, from Ekron even to Gath. It delivered everything and there was peace between the Israel and the Amorites because the ark was restored and their hearts were also restored. Can I tell you this? From scripture we see that the ark brought great victory. When the state of the heart, the careers of that ark, their relationship with God was put in place, the ark was able to produce wonders in their lives. Now, my concern tonight is not really the ark. My concern tonight is the construction and the content. The Bible lets us know very quickly that according to Hebrews chapter 9, Paul was speaking. When you read from verse 1 and 4, 1 to 4, Paul gives us um, a picture. He gives us a very graphic representation of all that was represented in the ark. And I want us to look at it very briefly. Ready? Hebrews chapter 9. That's all right. I'll turn back and read. Then verily he said, the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. We're reading to verse 4. For there was a tabernacle made. The first wherein was the candlestick, the table and the shoe bread, which is called the sanctuary. After and after the second veil, the tabernacle which is called the holiest of all. Read with me verse 4 please if you can see it. Ready? One to read. Which had the golden censer uh -huh, and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold. Wherein was the golden pot that had manna and the Aaron's rod that budded and the tables so we know that there were three things from Exodus and from Hebrews that the ark it was so designed to be a a um, it was like a chest a triangle a, a, a rectangular chest are we together that was overlaid when you read from chapter 25 from verse 10 to 22 of Exodus. It gives you all the details of the construction of the ark. But then it says it was designed in a way and a manner that it was overlaid with what we call the messy seat. And the Lord made a very interesting statement. He says, above the messy seat, below the cherubims, there I will meet with you and I will relate with you intimately there was a location if you can prepare that ark he says i will meet with you very important so we know that the construction of the ark and the content of the ark all together where number one, listen, pay attention. The contents of the ark now, we're dealing with it. One, it had the wood. The construction of the wood. And do you know, when you read Exodus chapter 25, beginning from verse 10, God kept telling man, even though my presence will come, you do it. You do this one. You do this one. So, the very construction of the Ark of Covenant required the participation of man. This is the first thing we have to understand about the construction and the content. It was not God. God gave the commands. But man was instructed. He was given the dimensions. He was told what to do. But he had to do it. That means if you want to experience the glory of God, there is a role that you have to play. It is not all up to God and it is not all up to you. There is a participatory role that man will always play as far as hosting the grace, the power, the wisdom, the presence of God is concerned. The wood was constructed by man. It took the meticulousness, the discipline, the diligence of going to look for the exact wood and the specification. God came to rest upon it, but it was man who designed it. This is the first information I want you to understand. So the construction, the wooden construction represents the participation of man. 
Then number two, the Bible talks about the covenants or the commandments. The table, remember, the, the ten commandments that Moses received from the Lord. And then in anger, he threw it and then he was made to construct the stones again. And God again wrote on those tablets. And he says, take those two tablets, the commandments. Number three, we see the pot or the omer that was full of manna that fell from heaven. In Exodus chapter 16, Exodus chapter 16, when you read from verse 31 to 35, Exodus chapter 16, 31 to 35, they murmured against God and against Moses how that they were hungry and God sent manna, manna from heaven that the Bible tells us was the bread of angels. And every day they were asked to pick and then on the Sabbath they were asked to pick and by the next day it did not decay and he was given an instruction. He says take some of this and put in the pot. Let it be as a testament, as a memorial of that supply and that provision and that power of God. Are we learning? Number three, we see the rod of Aaron that burdened. When you read number 17, the whole text is in number 17 from verse 1 to 10, but particularly verse 9 and 10. Numbers chapter 17. This was a leadership problem, by the way. Man of God, if you are having a very serious leadership problem in your church or in your organization, read number 17. Because God himself brought an end to every kind of controversy around leadership. He said, take the rods of everybody from every tribe, the 12 tribes. He said, place it before the tabernacle, the ark. He says, whichever will board, also take the one of Aaron. So that they will know that my ordination to his priesthood was not human. And the Bible says, by the next day. So they, they will not blame Moses again. There are times you make decisions as a leader and people think it's favoritism. People think you are just being sentimental. There are times you need to trust God to do something that everybody will know. This one is the hand of God. And an end came to all the quarreling and the arguments, the Bible says. So, God instructed immediately. He said, the rod of Aaron that bought it, put it also at the ark. Let it be a memorial. So we see that the Ark of Covenant basically contained three things inside. The table of testaments or commandments. Number two, the rod of Aaron that bordered. Are we together? And then number three, the pot that was full of manna. And then overlaying the Ark was what we call the mercy seat. Why am I taking out time to break these elements of the ark? Because if it is the glory of God you want to see rest, if you want to become a mobile ark, every one of these things that was in the ark must be in you too. If you want to replicate the ark in your life, then you have to follow the pattern of the construction also. If anything is found wanting, as far as the elements are concerned, you may not be able to replicate the ark that hosts the presence of God. Are we blessed? So let's look at the significance of these elements and then we pray. Number one, the first lesson we have to learn from the ark is that it was constructed by man. The vessel that carried the ark was a representation of man. Here's what the Bible says. Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure, having this seal. It says, The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let every man that named the name of Christ depart from iniquity. And then the next verse says, But in a great house, he lists four kinds of vessels and their implication. He says there are vessels of wood, there are vessels of clay, there are vessels of silver, there are vessels of gold. He says some vessels are unto dishonor and there are vessels that are unto dishonor. If you want to become that vessel, here is the condition. If a man will purge himself. He says that man will be a vessel unto honor, meat or fit for the master's use. 
So the first thing we have to deal with is man's participation. The discipline and the diligence of allowing your life to become that worthy habitation that can host the fullness of the presence and the power of God. If you're with me, say Amen. amen. The ark was made of choice wood, expensive, valuable material. It was not just made of careless wood, it was, it was meticulously built by the intelligence and the artistry of man. Number two, for the sake of time, what is the significance of the covenants, the commandments? They represent laws and they represent instructions. Can I tell you this? If you want to host the presence of God, within your life must be an accommodation for the principles of the kingdom and instructions. The commandments represent instructions. And these instructions, notice that principally these instructions come from and through men. They come from God, but they come through men. When God delivered the Ten Commandments, He was the one who wrote it. But the person who interpreted and explained it was Moses the man. Any man who is not given to the reception of divine instructions can never truly host the glory of God. Are we learning something now? We are constructing the ark in our own lives now. That the first element that is needed is you. The vessel must be sufficient. Not in yourself necessarily, but that purging by the blood, by the word. To become a vessel of honor. And then instructions. We thrive and we excel and we command victory in this kingdom. On the strength of the laws and the instructions that we receive. This is why Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15 says, And I will give you shepherds, pastors, after my heart, it says, That they will feed you with knowledge and with understanding. Proverbs continue to, ch to challenge us and said that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It says, but fools despise instruction. Are we together? You want to host superior dimensions of the glory of God, especially in this end time. If you want the ark to be experientially constructed in and through your life, then you must be prepared to work with, in keeping with the laws I'm not just talking of Old or New Testament. I'm talking of laws, the ordinances of the kingdom. And then the instructions of the Lord. And thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. And if you do obey that instruction, it says you will find rest for your soul. Are we learning? The next element that must be captured in our life is the mystery of the rod of Aaron. The rod of Aaron validated the priesthood ministry of Aaron. So the rod there is a representation of priesthood. You want your life to be an expression of the ark, you must embrace the mystery of priesthood. And the primary assignment of priesthood is to burn that instance, the ministry of prayer. Your life will never truly be able to be a, a representation of the glory and the grace of God if priesthood is absent in your life. Jesus came into the temple when he found people selling and buying and selling in the temple. The zeal of the Lord ate him up and the Bible says he took whip when he beat them up. This is what he said, my house, if it is truly my house, it shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. But you have turned it into a den of robbers. Many of you have heard me teach. Your house is either one of two things at any given time. A house of prayer or a den of robbers. 
a den of robbers means a place where thieves dwell and satan is the principal thief that can come so if your life is not a house of prayer as that temple the next thing it becomes is a den of robbers where the thief can come to steal to kill and to destroy there's no being neutral at any given time this temple your house is either a house of prayer or a den of robbers the robbers will come as mysterious demonic afflictions the robbers will come as all kinds of oppressions but when it becomes a house of prayer the fire that is upon that altar will not allow any spirit that is not of the Christ to dwell there. Because the Bible says, Jesus himself teaching said, when a spirit is casted out of a man, Jesus is teaching us now, he says when that spirit comes out of a man, it goes around through desert regions looking for a place, not finding any place, it will say, I will return back. There is something about the desert that makes the spirit not comfortable nobody is casting the spirit from the desert it will cast itself back and prefer staying in you do you know why because the desert is extremely hot so when your life simulates the condition of the desert that spirit will also not be able to stay within you was it not the fire from the fire that made the viper come out when there is no fire the viper can remain there priesthood hear me believers we must get to a point where genuine prayer becomes a lifestyle not something we do just to obtain things the primary assignment of prayer is for your transformation more than receiving requests the bible says and as he prayed speaking about jesus he says his garment his face became as white and his garment became as white and his countenance changed so prayer is principally a tool for transformation you evolve into superior versions of yourself when you pray you do not find your former self again after prayer the self that you now see is the powerful one is the great one is the anointed one bring a weak believer with no bearing in his life bring someone who does not know his left and his right submit him to the ministry of priesthood and watch an evolution happen a timid person will become a champion in the spirit if you want to host the glory of god especially in these end times let me tell you sincerely do not ignore the rod of aaron it's not just a rod it's a rod of priesthood you're not just going to stand and tell demons, go away. You will not just stand over cities and say, I open the tulip gate. No, sir. It will be at the instance of genuine priesthood. He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray. You have an assignment to register your name in the realm of the spirit. So that demons will not just say, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. Add your name, Joshua Selman, I know, because they are witnesses to your priesthood. We are discussing the ark. Remember the wood of Achaia, the Castia wood. Remember the commandments, laws, and instruction. Remember the rod of Aaron, priesthood. Now the next is the pot or the omer that carried manna. Pilaskita branda katoshke debriya. Shanima katabrasige debeleke debrasi. The manna there talks about the ministry of the word. Jesus himself was speaking about this in Matthew 4. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Every word. The manner that does not decay. The manner that could not go through corruption. And the only seed we know that is incorruptible is that which is by the word of God. Listen to me. The word of God defines the jurisdiction of his commitment to the believer. 
God cannot be committed to the believer outside of the scope that the word of God allows him. He has chosen to exalt his word even above his name. This is the difference between the faith life and superstition. God is bound only by his word. That means if you want to get God committed to your life, it must be the, the legal basis upon which you will place your demands must be scripture. When Satan came to him, he didn't say, I think. He didn't say, I wish. He said, it is written. What gives us victory in this kingdom is what is written, not what we want. Whatever you want, you must find out whether it is written or not. If what you want is not written, it cannot happen. What you want only happens when it is written. Please listen to me. If you want to host the glory of God upon your life, your church, your business, it must be a ministry that has respect and value for scripture. It was written so that it cannot be changed. It is written. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 11. Jesus himself was teaching. And he said, it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. We reign in this kingdom on the strength of the mysteries that we sustain. A mystery is a hidden body of truth that is privy to a group of people. We rise in this kingdom on the strength of the mysteries that we know. There are mysteries that control speed. There are mysteries that control restoration. There are mysteries that control lifting. There are mysteries that control being anointed. There are mysteries that control exemption. There are mysteries that control prosperity. There are mysteries that control influence. Your assignment is to walk in partnership with the Spirit of Grace and find for everyone that seeks it, find it. The seed for finding is to seek. If you do not seek, you cannot have the harvest of finding. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 1 says, Through desire a man, having separated himself, that he seeketh and he intermeddleth with all wisdom. Please let us obtain grace from God to go back to scripture and settle down. Otherwise our life will look superstitious yet will keep failing. I believe the word of God. Why do I know the sick will be healed? Because it is written. Why do I know God will commit himself to your lifting tonight? Because it is written. Not because I am a man of God. Being a man of God is a secondary reason. The primary reason why all things happen is because it is written. John chapter 1 and verse 3. All things were made by him. And without him, without him means outside of his influence, was not anything made that was made. That means when you neglect the word of God, the possibility of creation and manifestation has left you. It has to be at the instance of the word. Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 and 3 says, God who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us in time past, through the prophet had in these last days spoken to us through his son which is the word whom he had appointed to be heir over all things and then when you read verse 3 he says who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding how many things upholding my tomorrow upholding my tomorrow Upholding my tomorrow through the word of his power. Up, upholding my future. My confidence is beyond the advantage or the disadvantage in a territory. Your confidence must be based on it is written. It is written. Why will you succeed? I have a great father. You are joking. Woe unto him that puts his strength in a man. Even the word himself used it is written to defend himself. The word of God didn't say my opinion. The word submitted to it is written. 
Can I tell you this? You must know how to defend your victory. It is written. Why should I leave this family? It is not we are members of a particular church that is wonderful there is a place for prophetic covering but i tell you the real reason why we excel in this kingdom is because it is remember the manner it was kept here as a memorial that there is no victory for you if it is not written anything that is not written cannot happen the anointing of the spirit does not work at random the anointing of the spirit follows what is written so if you are making claims in prayer there is a verification system in the realm of the spirit before the anointing begins to move on that wise the anointing does not just come because you want it to come the anointing verifies whether that desire is consistent with what is written. preachers let's stop preaching what we want and preach what is because what we want will not come to pass until it is written. Please sit down. The Lord is turning you into an ark. Now you know what makes the ark more than the object. The participatory role that you have to play. Sitting down and waiting for God to do everything is a joke. It took man to build the ark. It will take you to make that place conducive for him. You want to become an ark, you must submit yourself to laws and instructions. And then you must submit yourself to the ministry of priesthood. You must learn to pray until you evolve into a vessel of honor. You can pray yourself from wood and become clay. Pray yourself from clay and become silver. Pray yourself from silver until you become gold. Hear me? When we pray, we truly evolve. Yes, sir. The version of you your future is looking for has not yet become. So your future is looking for a version of you that you have not become. Ah. The dream you saw about your greatness, that dream was designed to happen to another version of you, not this version. And your destiny keeps waiting. So it looks like you are not moving forward. And God is saying, no, I want to bless you. But there is a version of you that must carry that anointing. The anointing you are looking for for nations cannot come on this fashion. I'm seeing the spirit of prayer just coming on 11 people. This is what I'm seeing. Please just help them. 11 people. Now you understand that prayer is for your growth, for your evolution. Hear me. Hear me. You can pray an old realm out of your life into a new season. You can use prayer to close seasons and open new ones. Can I be honest with you? If we truly want to become this ark, we must obtain grace from God to move past just the realm of meeting needs to the realm where you stand with God and you can grow to a point of stature where God can trust you with the grace for nations not just things we are not talking about having one or two things that God can carry the destiny of a territory and say take if they are saved it's your fault if they are not saved it's your fault 
Look at the rewards of those who were faithful with the talents that were given to them. Authority over nations. Believers, let's return to the genuine ministry of priesthood. More than just give me things. I'm not saying those things are wrong. You can listen to my message, teach us to pray. I taught there about the mysteries, the dimensions of prayer. There is a dimension of prayer that is for supplication and petitions. But primarily, prayer is a tool for fellowship. And in that fellowship, there is evolution. You know you have met him because you changed. The protocol of encounter is that when you meet him, you are changed. And we all, with unveiled face, it says, beholding the glory. It's not the glory that changes. It's you that changes. Hear me? When the animals looked at what Jacob put, they were the ones who were changed into what they were seeing. Then the manna, which is the word of God. Ignorance is dangerous in this end time. You must know what is written. Please sit down. The Bible basically contains three things. Am I wasting your time? Every time you open up scripture, the Bible contains three things that you must never forget. Number one, the Bible contains promises. The promises of God represent the scope of his commitment to you. There are promises that he has made. Excellent things he has spoken about his Zion. You must know the promises of God as revealed from scripture. What has God said he would do? Because when you can find what God said he will do, I assure you he will do it. Genesis 21 and verse 1. Please give it to us. Verse 1 and 2. Genesis 21. Read with me please. 1 to read. As he has. Uh -huh. And the Lord did unto Sarah. When he speaks. He does. Except he has not said it. So you must find his promises. Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in her old age at the set time which the Lord had spoken. Promises. That's the first thing we search for in scripture. Every time you open your Bible, your eyes must look for promises. Lord, what have you said concerning my life? What have you said concerning my destiny? It is only what he has said that comes to pass. Integrity is the ability to say and do. If God has not said, why should he do? So when you find what he has said, then because he's a God of integrity, the Bible says God is not a man that he should lie. That means men lie. Men don't lie because they are bad. They lie because they are men. Hallelujah. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. You can trust what he said. Now listen carefully. The second thing that is contained in scripture are principles. Principles represent the modus operandi of the kingdom. How the kingdom operates. When you study scripture, you find therein principles. Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16. He says to stand and to ask. Look at that path, that old path. Stand in the way and ask for the old path. He says wherein is the good way and when you have found it, walk in it. Jesus the word also called himself the way. There is a revelation of Jesus called Jesus the way. How things are done in the kingdom. There is a way God lifts people. There is a way God restores. There is a way God anoints. There is a way God increases. There is a way God de defends people. You have to understand the ways of God. Before he showed Moses his glory, the first thing he showed Moses were his ways. So, promises, principles, 
The third thing we find in scripture are prophecies. Revelations about the future. To be able to give you hope and to give you comfort. We find in scripture prophecies. So that we know that we are overcomers. Because of the prophecies that we have seen. Every time you open your Bible, you are searching for these three things. Promises, principles, prophecies. If your life is built upon the integrity of it is written, the dust will come and go, every other thing will come and go, but because this house is built on a rock, it will stand and it will remain. The same thing that happened to the house on the sand happened to the house on the rock. It was not the superstructure. It was the foundation. Jesus said, this is how I will build my church. I will build my church with a formula. And if this formula is, is honored, the gates of hell will not prevail against her. Build your life on scripture. Build your life on it is written. And you have nothing to fear. The uncertainties that plague our world, the uncertainties that plague ministries, plague regions, are enough to make us fear. But the word of God can give us confidence because we know that it is written. Prophecy already told us the end of it. We know who has won. Ah. There are times that you are watching a movie and someone who has watched it before is sitting with you. He cannot have your anxiety. They kill the actor and you are, frustrated. you are frustrated. I've wasted one hour. I thought this man would win and the person says, you just keep watching. And you are wondering, what, where is your confidence coming from? The confidence is coming from the fact that he's watched it before. He watched it right to the point that he saw the end. And I can tell you, this right here already told me the end of my life. Yeah. He will not suffer my food to be. I carry your presence. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. I have found the end of my destiny here. That I know the thoughts that I think towards you, say at the Lord, that they are thoughts of peace and not of evil. To bring you a future and... There is a difference between having a future and having an end. You can have a future but maybe not have an end. Your today was a future to last week. Future is relative. End is fixed. I am secured in both. I have a future and I have an end. The final element, and then we begin to pray. Is the mercy seat that overlays it. There is something called the mercy seat. Exodus chapter 25. When you read 17 to 22. Just write it for reference. The mercy seat. Truly means the mercy of God. It's as simple, as clear, as honest as that. What is the mercy of God? The mercy of God is a factor that is, is an invention from his intelligence to be able to deal with man in spite of the vacillations of man. The mercy of God was an invention that was custom made for man. God built the idea of mercy so that in spite of the frailties of man, there is still a guarantee that he can end. This is the reason why Mercy is not an attribute of God that angels and other beings experience. That's why Satan cannot be forgiven. Because mercy is not within his jurisdiction. 
And to tell you how determined God is for us to be partakers of his mercy, he tied his mercy with time. So that every 24 hours, as time resets, his mercy also resets. It's in your Bible. He says his mercies are new every morning. Hallelujah. The mercy of God is not a license for licentiousness, but it's an advantage. The mercy of God gives me guarantee that in spite of my frailties, I will still be able to birth the purposes of God. The mercy of God is a covenant that we had with David. As a result of the desire of David to build him a house, he came and he entered the covenant of mercy with David. He says, no matter what you do, David, I have covenanted with you. Saul did not have his mercy. That's why he lost his throne. Saul was more well behaved than David. Oh yes, read your Bible. Saul was by far more well behaved than David. But the mercies of David you are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Now, watch this. All healing. All deliverances, all restorations stem from that department of His mercy. It is on the strength of God's mercy that we can guarantee that someone who has been oppressed, that a family that legally gave themselves to the devil as lawful captives, when it has to do with victory over captivity, is not power you need, it's the mercy of God. There are spirits you don't just bind and cast. There are rules of engagement. There is a kind of captivity called lawful captivity. It is this kind that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb. For instance, the legal access that Satan had over us by reason of the fall of Adam could not be casted away. No. God did not use power to save man. It was the blood and his death. His power was demonstrated in that mercy. Are we together now? So tonight, I have two assignments in this place. I have just completed one. To challenge you that you can become a mobile Gather the elements that they gathered. Obey what they obeyed. That glory will rest upon you the same way it rested upon them. An individual can be a carrier of that presence. You can take that presence everywhere. Anybody who drags you who is a Philistine will soon know what he carried. You don't have to tell people I am dangerous. Let the devil try you. And what happened to the Philistines? When they took the ark, they stole it. The ark that was not talking was bringing havoc in the camp of the enemy. But when the same ark was taken to the house of Obed Edom, in 90 days, 90 days, that means if you are employed, in three months of your being in that office, there are things that should begin to happen as a testament that the ark has arrived. Like I was teaching you yesterday, please, this is not some Pentecostal motivation. Believe me, it is true. You can be a living, breathing carrier of this ark. That way, when people are tired of trouble, they invite you to their house. 
Who do we invite to just sit down for five minutes? And you just sit down in their house and they say just to say God bless you. And you stand up and they start rejoicing. Because right there, the five minutes visitation, it was not just a man that came. The man is the wood, the earthen vessel, but there is the excellency of what has come upon it. When you stretch your hands to heal the sick, it is not the mortal hands of a man. No. 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 Just help those under the anointing. When you stretch your hands to deliver, the demons are not seeing hands. You are the one who is seeing a hand. The demons are seeing the same act. That same act. Let the weight of your glory cover us. Let the light of your river flow. Let the truth of your kingdom let it rain, let it rain in us. Let the way. Glory. Listen, listen. One day, I was in the place of prayer and I was caught up in the realm of the Spirit and I began to hear the song of angels. And this was the song that I heard. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let it cover all the earth. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let it cover all the earth. Let it cover all the earth. Let it cover. Let it cover all the earth. Let it cover all the earth. You are here in this place tonight. Before I begin to pray for the sick, I know that our time is gone. In the construction of the ark, there are elements. The first of them that I taught you is the wood. The wood had to avail itself to be used to create that habitation. There are people here scattered across the overflow. All of the overflows following online, flowing from whatever nation. Before we even begin to minister to people, I just sensed in my heart to make the altar call very quickly. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, I desire to be this leading ark of God's presence. Perhaps you were not here yesterday. Or you were here yesterday, but you had not made up your mind to make this decision. Our time is fast spent. Here's how we are going to do it. Every overflow, when I make the call, you just go to the front of your screen and you stand there. For time's sake. I'm going to count one to five. There are people here who are saying, Apostle, I want to avail myself for the sake of your glory. The glory of the only begotten, even full of grace and truth. You want me to pray for you before we start? I'd like you to run like there's fire on the mountain. I'm going to count five. Run and come and stand. One, run to Jesus. Make sure you understand what you are doing. You're coming out to give your life to Jesus Christ. Two. All the overflows, please come out. I hear the chains falling. Hey. I keep the chains 
calling. Keep coming. Let it end tonight. I need the change calling. I need the change calling. Hallelujah. My God, I already sense such, such power in this place. I'm going to pray for you, all of you who are in front. Many of you are rededicating your lives to Jesus. The Bible says, let it be known to you the message of Peter, that this same Jesus has been exalted today as both Lord and Christ. This is the one we preach, Christ crucified, Christ resurrected. Many of you are coming here tonight. God is giving you a new beginning. Do not be ashamed. We are a family. Those following online, you who is following from your home, you're following everywhere across the globe, God is giving you an opportunity to make Jesus Lord. Hallelujah. Please lift your right hand. Say after me as loud as you can. All of you in front, all the overflow, same, and those following in your home. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I believe in you. That you are the son of God. You obtain your mercy. And I obtain your grace. I ask. That you forgive me. And in the name of Jesus. I declare. That I am a recipient. Of eternal life. Jesus Christ. Is my savior. My lord. And my king. From today, I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Thank you, Father, for these ones that you have brought to yourself. I pray in the name of Jesus. By the authority of Scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. And I declare that He gives you a new experience from today. I commend you to the ministry of the Word and the ministry of the Spirit. I pray that you be established and grounded in righteousness. And that you become mighty vessels for the master's use. In Jesus name I pray. Now very quickly, just make sure you obtain a card. There will be counselors giving you a card. Once you obtain it, you can return back to your seat and just be patient. And follow the remaining part of the meeting. Hallelujah. Please everybody rise. We have a few minutes. I want to pray for you tonight. It's a miracle service. And it's going to be a very quick one because our time is gone. Please let them return back to their state. Just be patient with them. So let hope, let it rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. One more time. Let hope. Let it rise. Darkness trembles in the holy light. One more time. Let it Let it rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Hallelujah. The Lord, by what He is going to be doing within the few minutes that we have, miracles and signs and wonders are a message from God to His people. Two messages, basically. Number one, every time you see a miracle, it's a revelation of the love of God to His people. He's telling you that I have loved you with an everlasting love. And I have drawn you with my loving kindness. Number two, miracles are an attestation as to the fact that he is still Lord. I shared with you that there are four things that a man must have dominion over to be called Lord. Number one is the earth. Number two, the fullness, the resources. Number three, the mind control systems. And number four, the inhabitants. And the Bible says the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the walls, and they that dwell therein. We're going to be praying for the sick. I'll be ministering to you. We'll do that very fast within the time that we have. 
please let your heart be open you didn't come to waste your time and those in the overflows i like you to open up your heart knowing that the power of god will touch you where you are and the lord himself will bring you victory are you ready for tonight lord give me a visitation please pray in one minute give me a visitation that will change my life Give me a visitation that will change my life. Hallelujah. 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 Now, let me start by praying for people who have been oppressed. There are people here who have been oppressed of the devil. When Peter was preaching in the house of Cornelius, you don't have to come out, don't worry. I'll, I'll just give you the instructions on what to do. The Bible says, Peter was preaching and he said, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, Acts chapter 10 and verse 38, with the Holy Ghost, he said, and with power. And the Bible says, he went about healing, not all they who were sick. You call it sickness. He called it oppression and it tells you the oppressor the devil for god was with him there is nowhere i find the devil that i will leave him to go free for oppressing lives and oppressing destinies i want to pray for you now and please as much as possible ushers now please listen whether you are an usher or not i want you to do well to just cooperate some of you are members the ushers may be limited but I want you to please help them. Anyone who is under the anointing close to you, please do well and be your brother's keeper so that we minimize people enjoying themselves. Are we together? The Lord Jesus appeared to me many years ago and he gave me an instruction and he told me that every city he would send me to and every nation and every territory, the light that came from him to me, that there must be someone in that meeting that that same light will come upon and i believe tonight please help them i believe that this light it brings healing it brings miracles i want to pray for you now there are people who have been oppressed of the devil please i want you to bring them out now these people i'm about to pray for at the count of three i want you to shout the name jesus Every oppression that is not of God, every demonic orchestration of darkness that has sat on the destinies of people in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the Son of the Living God, as you shout, it is the healer, the shout that brings down Jericho. I decree and declare at the mention of that name, the one exalted as Lord and Christ. Let there be deliverance for you right now. Are you ready? Please bring them out. One, two, three. Shout Jesus. I command every devil now. Let their destinies go. Bring them out. Every devil. I command liberty. Freedom. By the power that is in the name of Jesus. Wherefore. God has so highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name. I decree and declare, be delivered now. Orchestrations of ancestry, activities of witchcraft connected to bloodline. Tonight we come by the rod of the higher priesthood. Be delivered in the name of Jesus. Bring them out. I caught every devil. We are still praying. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer. The 
Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing families. There are whole families that have been under bondage. I want to pray now. There's fire coming from Kapaka to Katea. Bring them out. In the name of Jesus. Every family here. Under the sound of my voice. That has been under any demonic siege. At the count of three. Let there be liberty. One. Two. Three. Be delivered now. Be delivered now. Bring them out. Help them please. In a barakosh kata branda kata 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 Shakos kati barus rasiena kata Empre kete kete bala Let an end come In the name of Jesus How God anointed Jesus Of Nazareth With the Holy Ghost And with power He went about doing good Hallelujah We are praying. Who is Ebenezer? Our time is up. I have to pray for the sick. But I'm hearing a name Ebenezer. Who is Ebenezer? Ebenezer, you are wearing like a blue, like a church shirt. Is that Ebenezer? Is there someone like that? What's, please verify. Don't match the people. Ebenezer. Where are you coming from? I'm coming from this side. I want to pray for you. Where are you coming from? I mean your state. Ekiti state. Ekiti state. Yes. I want to pray for you. That everything that is connected to witchcraft, I stretch my hands, be delivered now. In the name of Jesus the Christ, I bring you life. That lady, this one, you on red, lifting your hands. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Oppression goes forever over your life. Sir, is this your wife? I'm seeing the Lord take something out of her body. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing something leaving her body that the devil has planted to destroy her. In the name of Jesus, who is the Christ of God, I command that devil, I call you by name. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says, Whosoever the Son sets free, is free indeed therefore we curse every devil madam i'm here to pray for the sick but i stretch my hands right now let there be a miracle for you in the presence of your husband don't worry she doesn't have to come to the front in the name of jesus be healed now be healed now be healed now be healed now is it amarachi is there something like that Amarachi, who is that? Amarachi, I'm hearing a name. Amarachi. The woman I'm seeing is not very tall. You bob your hair. You bob your hair. Amarachi, is there someone like that? What is your name? Oh. Your lifting has come. Oh, 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 oh. Your has come. Look at me, my dear. Where are you coming from? Ababa. Ababa. Where is that? What state is that? Okay, here. I want to pray for you and your family. Huh? You are the father. Baba, come. The Lord is visiting this family. You see why it's good to invite people to church? Because God can just save a whole nation. This is not about a man of God being powerful. I'm seeing one more person. You are three. Who is that? I'm seeing one more person connected to this family. In the name of Jesus. Huh? I read to Christopher. Where? I read to Christopher. I invited him. The song we are, I don't know where he is. Because I'm seeing three people, not two. Where is the third person? What's the name? If, if it's not here because of time, we just have to pray so that we'll redeem the time. Sir, can I pray for you? You love Jesus? Very much. This is, you see, the beauty of coming to church. I was glad when they said unto me. God. 
The house of God is not a nuisance to civilization. We are a blessing. I pray for you right now. You and your daughter and all who are connected to you, sir. I pray for you. Four years, you are yet to have a child. This is what I'm saying. Four years. Who is that person? Please make sure you are married. Four years. Husband and wife, you are both in the choir. Husband and wife, place your hand. God is going to give you a baby boy. Help her. Out now. I release you in the name of Jesus Christ. Celebrate your miracle. The hand of God. Marvelous hand of God. You too? How many years? Four years. Is your husband here? No, he's not here, sir. Four years. You're trusting God. You believe in miracles? <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. What's your name? Pinedu. Who is the head of this choir? Are you the head of the choir, like the, like the coordinator? This because this is what I'm seeing on her. Because the Lord is speaking to me and saying He's taking away the shame of the coordinator, and I'm saying because she's not dressed like I'm not seeing her dress in the same uniform like them. My dear, in the name of Jesus, we come by the God of heaven, and we declare, let your womb be open now. Let it be open now. In the name of Jesus Christ. This woman is out too. For the same reason, I'll pray for you. Please don't come out at random. If you make this, let's, let's just, don't worry. God is going to visit you. Are we together now? God is going to visit you. The power of God is coming on someone at the ministers, just one person. I just saw light. The Lord is shifting you into a new season. That's what the Lord is telling me. He's shifting you into a new season. I pray for you, all of you who are here for the sake of time, we have to rush. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is a businessman here that God wants to restore. You have lost a lot of money this year. I have to pray for you. I don't mean somebody who is starting. Don't worry. I know most, this is a business place. We are talking about the East here. So I'm sure everybody will come out if I've said, but just settle down there. There is a specific person that the Lord is revealing to me. I don't know what you do. Is it, is it something that has to do with construction? I'm seeing that you've lost a lot of money. If there is someone like that, I want to pray for you while I quickly pray for them. Father, everyone who is in the name of Jesus, like Eli. Madam, this woman lifting her hands. I'm seeing oil coming on your head. This is what I'm seeing. The Lord is revealing this to me. Right now, I stretch my hands and I declare... In the name of Jesus, let everything that represents oppression in your life and your family, let it come to an end right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let it come to an end right now. There is someone holding photos. You came here with photos, pictures of your family members. Please, if there's someone like that, please verify so that it doesn't look like well. If, if it's not, I'm not saying if you have photos in your bag, you are holding photos. Let me pray for you. It's just the instruction that the Lord is giving to me. For everyone here trusting God for the fruit of the womb, I declare a miracle for you right now. In Jesus' name I pray. And sir, I pray for you and your daughter and this. Hold on. Is he your son or your brother? My brother. Same father, same mother. Younger brother? Younger brother. Who is Christopher? 
Christopher. What's your name? Christopher Arredo. From where? I'm from Amechala, Enugezike. Amechala, Enugezike. I'm going to pray for you. Because, uh, please don't feel I'm not a prophet of doom. God will save you. But I'm looking at this man and I'm seeing him inside a coffin. I'm not, that's why I said, don't be afraid. This is where ministers of life, I'm just revealing to you. You see the power of scripture. Because it is written is greater than I saw. No matter what it is that you see, dominion is the ability to submit what you saw to it is written. This is how ministers of the gospel, the administration of the prophetic must be done with respect to the authority of scripture. That means regardless what you see, if it's inconsistent with what is written, that becomes your assignment. To make what you saw or what you heard turn and become what is written. That's what it means to bring every thought to the obedience of Christ. This is how prophecy edifies the body. When prophecy submits to it is written, it now begins to edify. Otherwise, it will plant fear. If I leave this man right now, I have not blessed him. I will not only plant fear, I will plant fear to his family members who are watching. But dominion is the ability to bring any other thing, including what you saw, to the obedience of Christ. I'm saying this because the Lord is also helping to train people in administering the gifts of the Spirit. So that we don't end up planting fear and a conference like this is done and people are worse than they were before it started. No. The character of the operation of Scripture is that it must take away fear. Because God is love and perfect love casts out fear. In the name of Jesus, sir. No, I'm, I'm, don't worry. I lay my hands upon you. As a point of contact, who is this one? Your wife? Who is this lady? Okay. Don't worry, sir. Wherever they are, as you are standing here, by faith, we agree for this family. Let there be transformation right now. Inside the name of Jesus, I declare that anything that is inconsistent with the character of the Christ in your life, we declare that it comes to an end now. For all of you who have photos, I lay my hands on those photos prophetically. And in the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the living God, let there be miracles for you. Let there be miracles for you. In Jesus' name. Please return to your seat. I want to pray for the sick now very quickly. Please return to your seat so that we'll have space. Just believe that it is done. I believe in miracles. I'm a miracle myself. We make Miracle walk, promise keep, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We call you away, make miracle walk, promise keep, light in the darkness, my God, that is Wow. I want to pray for the sick, but the Lord is giving me an instruction. I'll pray for the sick. Please, I want to be your brother's keeper over this prayer I want to pray. And I will tell you why. Every meeting I go to, God gives me this instruction. Please, whether you are an usher or not, I want you to just help the people. There is a grace for speed that can come upon an individual, that can come upon ministries, the Bible says, and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, and he ran on barefoot. He overtook the chariots of Ahab, even down to Jezreel. Truly, God can compress time. Dominion over time is real dominion. Speed is a system of advantage given by God to men to help us actualize destiny. I want to pray. The reason why I'm saying you should help people is because people will start running. I want you to just hold them, bring them out here quickly. We are going to do this very fast. I apologize for the time, sir, sincerely. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Father, in the name of... Ah, my goodness, my God. Look, I'm just seeing fire rest on people. Right now, I declare, at the count of three, may this grace for me. Help them, please. Help them, please. Help them, please. Help them, please. I decree and declare, every delay 
over anyone's life. I come by the road of a higher priesthood. At the count of three, receive speed. One, two, three. Take that grace. Take that grace. Take that grace. Take that grace. Inside, outside, the overflow. Take that grace. Speed in ministry. Speed in business. Speed in your accomplishments. I take 10 years and I put it in one year. I take one year and I put it in Apakatukata. Kretekete Bakatoskata. 10 years in one year. One year in one month. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare over families here. Receive speed in Jesus' name. 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 I am seeing fire fall on the choir. This is what I'm just seeing. Take that fire. Right now, help them please. Take that fire. Take that fire. In the name of Jesus Christ. Speed is coming upon your life. Speed is coming upon your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone held by any chain of delay. In the name that is above all names. I'm praying again. For individuals and for families. I break that chain. Let that chain of delay be broken now. Be broken now. Be broken now. Hear me. When the glory of God came upon Aaron's rod, in one night without a root, it bordered. One night without a root. Everything that has refused to walk in your life. We stand under the corporate anointing here. And in the name of Jesus. He said, Master, we have toiled all night. Nevertheless, I speak to you. Go back and expel. Go back and expel. Go back and expel. Go back and expel. Please lay your hands where you are trusting God for healing right now. I want you to believe in the healing power of Jesus. For all of you who have come out here, I declare that this grace you have contacted, let it begin to speak immediately. 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 Who is Jennifer? Jennifer. Jennifer. I'm hearing a name Jennifer. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord is rolling reproach from your family. He's rolling away reproach right now. Rolling away reproach right now. In the name of Jesus. He said, I wept for no man was worthy to open the book and unlock the scroll. And the elder tapped me and said, weep not for the lion of the tribe of Judah. Even the root of David is worthy. Hallelujah. Let this be the beginning of seasons of speedy achievement. Please lay your hands. Wherever you are trusting God for a miracle, I want to pray for the sick now. Sir, this is our father. I, I presume you look like an Indian family. Am I right on that? I want to pray for you. The Lord wants to take away sickness. I'm looking at a thermometer go up and down. This has to do with high blood pressure. I want to pray for you. 
you believe in miracles sir can i pray for you you can just stay there no problem you don't have to come out i will pray for you i just just to let you know that god is bringing a visitation god is bringing a visitation please lay your hands where you are trusting god for healing you can stand in for someone to those of you who are in front here please go back to your seat rejoicing anyone please go back to your seat rejoicing anyone here who if it's a part of your body you cannot touch just make contact with your chest please do that all the overflows just lay your hands where you are trusting god for a miracle right now i believe in miracles i truly do i believe in the manifestation of god's power help her please some of you are already healed right from when you were coming overflows lay your hands everywhere i want to pray for you now listen for the sake of time i do not want and i do not intend to stretch us beyond time but very quickly for the sake of time this is what i want us to do as soon as i pray for you some of you checking yourself from the time you came out here there are all kinds of miracles that have happened but very quickly as soon as i pray for you the power of God is going to touch you. You will be healed. I want the moment you confirm your miracle, I want you to quickly run and stand here. Please, if we can have one or two pastors here to just help us on that. We'll do it very fast. Take a few of the testimonies. We'll do the final impartation and we're done for the night. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. After a loud shout, the healing power of Jesus will begin to move. Not your shout. There is someone under the power of the Holy Spirit right now who will shout loud to the hearing of everybody. Honestly, sometimes I don't know why God does that. Now I'm ready to pray for you. In the name of Jesus, lay your hands. Agree with me in prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the Kapakatos Katepata. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I take authority over every devil of darkness. The spirit behind disease, sickness and infirmity. I declare let God's people go free now. Everywhere following wherever you are. I declare unto you, be healed right now. Be healed right now. Every bone condition, be healed right now. If you're here and you're on a wheelchair or you're using crutches or on a stretcher, lift it up and stand up now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every blind eyes. I command be open now every blind eyes be open now every deaf ear be open now every blood infection every blood in apakaposkata I'm seeing God healing people of hepatitis B be healed right now be healed right now in the name of Jesus Christ I'm seeing someone with a condition. Um, let it not embarrass you. You go to toilets, but you cannot use the toilet. This is not just pile. This is a situation. I don't know what medical condition that is, but it's difficult for you. You, you can't even use the toilet. Right now, the power of God is coming upon you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing someone with severe pain around your back. In fact, many people, not just one person, the power of God is touching you right now. Someone's left eye. You didn't used to see well with your left eye. But I pray for you right now. Clarity of vision right now. There's someone, even though I pray for people with bone condition, but you can't even lift your hands freely like this. I don't know what the problem is. I rebuke that devil. Peptic ulcer. Be healed now. Just help those under the anointing. Migraines. Be healed now. 
every stomach ulcers and all kinds of ulcers be healed right now. Help her, help her, help her. Be healed right now. Out of her now. Out of her in the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me? Anyone with any growth in any part of your body, whether growth around your breast area, your abdominal area, every growth in your body, I command that growth to disappear now. There's someone here, I don't know what was diagnosed in your head, like inside, not, not on your head, inside, and I don't know if it's a, whatever medical condition, but in the name of Jesus right now, I declare unto you, be healed now. Be healed now. Lower abdominal pain, severe pain, help them. Lower abdominal pain, the Lord is healing you right now. My God, there are all kinds of miracles. I'm looking at someone, your ankle, just here. There is a severe pain there. As soon as I, I'm done praying, check yourself now. You will find out that pain is gone. The Lord is showing me someone, you have a problem with your throat. You know how when you swallow something and it doesn't go, you keep feeling like there's something on your throat. Help her please. This is how someone has been feeling. But right now, after this prayer, at the instance of this prayer, that devil lets you go forever. Now, for the sake of time, whether or not I mention your case, be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. All the overflows be healed in Jesus name Across the nations of the earth be healed in Jesus name There are already people coming out Now please we have five minutes for this I want you to check yourself while we are rejoicing Hallelujah You are going to give us one hot Igbo praise Let the devil know that Jesus is moving in the east While that is happening I like you to come out Please check yourself the moment you find out there's a miracle come out miracles are happening here are you celebrating miracles please check yourself and make your way to the front choir can you help us in one minute two or three minutes just give us a song of praise as we celebrate the magnificent hand of god go ahead please very quickly keep coming check yourself and make your way to the front those in the overflows if they are coming for testimony please allow them ushers protocol allow them to come very, very quickly. Please check them. Let there be a group of people who will check them and confirm. Keep coming. God bless you. Keep coming. Keep coming. Miracles are happening in this place. Oh, 
celebrating Jesus here. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Please be seated for a few minutes. Yes, please. Very quickly. Are you ready? Very quickly. Your name and what God has done very quickly. Yes, please. Go ahead. Praise the Lord. I'm Kolakia Osakuni. Okay. Okay, so... Straight to the point. Yes. What happened to you? If anything you said... That we should lay our hands on the place that's pain, that we need healing. Yes. I laid my hands on my head because I've been having this, I don't know, is it migraine, headache. It's so... I don't what happened now? It. And immediately, I jumped dead. He jumped dead. I'm just going to get out there. I said, I'm so happy. Praise the Lord. I'm so happy to get out It's not going in my Hallelujah. life. Like, I even had, like, eyesight. I, I couldn't see. I, I wouldn't see what's written on the... I have glasses, you know. So, I'm trying to be like... You can see clearly now. Are you giving Jesus praise? In the name of Jesus, it will never return to you again. Celebrate Jesus very quickly. Praise the Lord. I'm Reverend Prince Alice. For more than 10 years now, I've been having this pain on my left shoulder that I can't even do anything. You're a man of God. Yes, sir. But now, lift it up. Let the devil see you lift it up. I can't feel it anymore. I can't feel it. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that the Lord will bless you to never return. And may your ministry step into a new season. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Very quickly. Yes, please. Praise the Lord. I'm Orifra Christiana. And I had lower back pain for some months now. But now I feel so good. Completely. Bend down. Check yourself. Any pain. Any pain. Completely. In the name of Jesus, it never returns to you again. Yes, please. Go ahead, sir. Praise the Lord. Also, I'm, good news, sir. I'm the businessman you mentioned who has, been, who has had serious losses. Secondly, I have my left eye. I have received serious healing on my left eye and serious abdominal pain just left. What happened to you now? Free. Gone completely. completely In the name of Jesus, I declare restoration for your business. Whatever the issue is, we come as the parliament of heaven. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we declare an end comes now. In Jesus' name. Yes, please. Very Sir, quickly. When you mention the ankle problem. This That's right. Problem. This man knows how to do this thing. God bless you. Yes, go ahead, Pastor. Hallelujah. Sir, you made mention of the ankle. Um, I had an ankle dislocation. I couldn't even train. Ankle dislocation. Right now, For how long? No more. For some weeks right now. I couldn't Check yourself. Train. Jump. Any pain. <laughs> In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare you are free right now. Yes, sir. No, no, no. Yes. My name is Pastor John Tumobi. I have this terrible back pain. He has been there for many years, uh, for, for a long time now. Every time I wake up to pray in the morning, I can't, I can't, every time, even when I go for programs, yes. I'll be stretched. But this night is gone and I'm here. In the name of Jesus. Look what God, you are, oh, you are the man who was standing here. Oh, okay, I thought you were the one who was standing here. In the name of Jesus, Pastor, I declare over you and over your ministry. Look at me, sir. You have a church? Can I pray for you? There, you, that's your wife? Don't worry, you don't have to come. If God touches him, he will show that you, both of you are one. I pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the power of the Lord come upon you and your ministry. I release grace for the next season. In the name of Jesus, receive that anointing. The same way God healed you here, I pray for you. I'm seeing fire come on your hands, sir. In the name of Jesus, let it be a new season for you. Madam, as he's touching you, he's touching your husband, and both of you will begin to operate in this grace. God bless you, sir. Congratulations. Yes, sir. Oh, this is our daddy. Sorry, sir. This man had been feeling headache all day because of high blood pressure. As you have high as, blood pressure? Yes. yes as soon as you mentioned the high blood case, he laid his hands on his head. And the the baba that came here. Yes, I did not take medicine because, of, because I was bringing my daughter here. So while I was here, my headache was my head was telling me that you did not take medicine today, and so it is going to continue. Yes, I right. said it is the word of God that will heal it. That's right. So when you said we should place our hands there, immediately I placed my hand there. I am free. In the name of Jesus, it will never return, never return to you again. In Jesus' name, I pray. Yes, please. Very quickly. Young man with the throat problem you mentioned. Throat condition. Yes. How long? What's your name? Um, Toby Wazo. I uh -huh. most of yesterday in the hospital. My throat. I couldn't swallow. Like I couldn't even eat. But when you were when you were praying, you mentioned it in your life. I'm can, I can talk now. I was whispering in the morning. Now I can talk. Praise the Lord. 
What will you eat this night now? What is what kind of food will let the devil know that you are well? May God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, please, the next person very quickly. No, don't give him the mic. If you give them mic, they will not just just hold it for them, sir. Yes. I play, I play football frequently, sir. You are a footballer? Yes, I play football frequently, sir. For? I play football frequently. Okay. So, I have this pain on my left knee. A knee pain? Yes, sir. For how long? Since this year, sir, actually. Okay. And right now? When check you yourself. Okay, check yourself. Okay, sir. Check. You play for who? You professionally? No, 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 no. Or you just play football? Oh, I thought it's professionally. I would have prayed for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. No. May the Lord bless you. Whatever you are doing professionally, may God bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, please. Yes, sir. This woman has had what doctor called clavicle spongylosis. Come she again. couldn't raise her arm for two years. And you couldn't raise your hand. For two raise years. it now. Look at this. Let us speak. What is I can hardly sleep on this. Five. Each time I sleep, I wake up with pain. And right now, I can't feel the pain. Ah! Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, the Christ of God, it will never return to you again. Amen. In Jesus' name. Yes, please. Very quickly. Very quickly. Very quickly. He had he's had pain for uh, around his uh, private region for over two years. Oh my God. Immediately she, he came in and he started praying. It disappeared. A miracle for pain you now. Anymore. In the name of Jesus Christ, this healing remains permanent, my dear brother. In Jesus' name I pray. Now, for the sake of time, there's, there's a long queue here. We'll, we'll just take two or three, three, and then we'll just pray. Tomorrow, during Reverend George's session, you can share it. The most important thing is that God visited the people. It doesn't matter how or through who it happened. We give him all the glory. Yes, please. This young lad, he said he's had stomach pain for three days now. But this when boy. we are praying, the stomach pain disappeared. You know I love children. What's your name? Kesta, where is it? Where's the kester? How old are you? Eight. Eight. Mm. May God make you such a smart child. You will never do anything twice to succeed. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you. You are healed. You remain healed forever. In Jesus' name. Yes, please. He said his heart and his eyes has been paining him for over for a long time now. And How long? My, I don't know. As it has been long, but I had a headache this as I was coming, but it disappeared as you were praying. Completely. Completely. It's gone. May the Lord bless you. This tall gentleman, are you a footballer? Yes, he looks like... Because I was laying my hands there, but as soon as she mentioned it, he disappeared. Oh, come, check yeah. yourself. Yeah. <laughs> In the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. Yes, let's just... He has told me a myriad of things. You are born in to share a testimony. <laughs> um, at time, yes, go ahead. He has told me a myriad of things. Okay. From stomach ulcers to everything. But the one that is striking is that his vision, one of the eyes could not see properly. Completely. But he said, one, so than the other. one was seeing better and now, than the other. But right now, completely. He says he has 20 20 vision. You can see everything here. This one saw better than the other. But I, I, I could notice for as long as I can remember. When yes. I'm just all, all alone, I could just close this and I notice that this one saw better than this. Well, it wasn't really a problem for me, but now I can see 20 In the name of Jesus, perfection for you. In Jesus' name. Yes, please. Um, I'm Kofi. And I've had this pain on my ankle for as long as I can remember. Pain on your ankle again? Yeah, this one. Yes. I don't know when it started. I just know I can't And right now, what happened to you? When you said um, when, at the end of the prayer that everything is going to be fine. But during the prayer, I was still feeling the pain. And I felt, ah, are you sure? And right now, right now, what happened to you? Like, Check yourself. It's gone completely. She will never return to you again. This, this gentleman, okay. My name is Humble. The last time you come to Opera Square, I was my, with my medical report. I lay it down here. Since 2008, I was having chest pain. I have go to a different lab. Or they will tell me that my ring. What happened now? What happened now? Now I can storm to the completely. In the name of Jesus Christ, it never returns to you. Now, for all of you, whether you have come out to testify or not, we give Jesus the glory for all that has happened and we declare that these miracles remain permanent in your life in Jesus name 
And for those of you who receive miracles online, you can do well to let the church know that you have been touched by the power of God. Please rise up. Let's do the final impartation so we can wrap up the meeting for tonight. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed tonight? Please do not forget the teaching that you heard tonight in addition to the powerful sessions that you'll be having tomorrow and then on Sunday. Make sure that your heart is open. The conference is not over. There's tomorrow's session in the morning and then on Sunday, powerful sessions with the Spirit of God. I want to pray and declare over your life. An impartation is a transference of spiritual possibilities. It is possible for you to receive a grace you did not come to this meeting with. That is the essence of conferences like this. That you hear the word, but then you are empowered by the Spirit. Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2 verse 2 says, And the Spirit entered into me when He spake unto me and set me upon my feet. The Holy Spirit comes to confirm the word. I stretch my hands and I decree and declare over everyone under the sound of my voice the grace that you will need to demonstrate the reality of the fact that God lives in you. I release that grace upon you now. I release that grace upon you now. Hear me? Everywhere you have been inefficient, I decree and declare the grace that makes for excellence. There is such a grace. May that grace rest upon you now. Every closed door that has refused to open over your life and your destiny. I join my faith with all the servants of God here and we declare, may that door be opened now. May that door be opened now. Please hear me. Where you have failed again and again and again, we release grace upon you. Because today you have become the act of God in experience. May your results show that you carry divine presence. Let me pray for your family members who are not here. You see, in this kingdom, the law is as for me and my house. If you are blessed alone, you are not blessed. It has to extend to you. It says, for this promise is unto you and to your children to your children's children as many as are afar off even those that the Lord will call I pray for you if there is anyone connected to you who is going through any season that requires the administration of God's power in the name of Jesus we bring those negative seasons to an end now Some of you have lost time. Some of you have lost things. I decree and declare, let there be supernatural restoration. If there is anyone here that is trusting God for a job, or trusting God for some sort of establishment, structural establishment, in the name that is above all names, I decree and declare, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, be established now. I want to declare advancement over your life. The Bible says it was the Lord that caused Moses and Aaron to advance. It is God that causes men to advance. Men do not just move. I pray for you. Where you have, you have encompassed this mountain long enough. Therefore I prophesy, go higher. I prophesy, go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Please hear me. I speak to you in the name of Jesus. Like it happened to the Philistines. Anybody who troubles you goes down instantly. Please believe it. We are wrapping up. Can I pray for you? If there is anyone holding what is yours. Tonight in this place, we overturn. We overturn. We overturn. 
will be overturned until it enters your hand in the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone here and any family here marked for death that you will not see the end of December in the name of Jesus we cast the spirit of death over your life I prophesy over your life whether you are flying in the air whether you are going on road whether it is by the sea be divinely protected in the name of Jesus Can I pray for your prayer life as I round up? Whatever has destroyed your passion for God, your passion for the ministry of prayer, in the name of Jesus, this night, we set your prayer life on fire again. We set your prayer life on fire again. The grace to pray, the grace to be consistent, the discipline to travail, in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for your word study life. Whatever has destroyed your passion for the word. In the name of Jesus, let there be restoration this night. Hear me. I want to destroy wrong associations from your life as we round up. Just help those under the anointing. Jonah entered a boat and made people to lose so many things. He didn't talk associations have prophetic implications jesus entered the same boat and yet he saved many people from destruction hallelujah apostle paul was in a boat and he told the people do not fear an angel has appeared to me he has told me there shall be no loss and they went safely and arrived at an island called melita i pray for you anyone who is connected to your destiny who is carrying a negative prophetic atmosphere i separate you from them right now hallelujah finally anyone here and any family here suffering from oppressions connected to ancestry connected to bloodline patterns you are seeing what happened to others coming the bible declares that we have been called out of every tribe and every tongue and every nation therefore in the name of jesus be delivered from everything connected to ancestry And for those who are members of House on the Rock Church Enugu, the Bible declares that a worker is deserving of his wages. Your pastor has so honorably honored you. I lend my voice and my faith with your pastor, the angel over this house. And I decree and declare unto you, be blessed in the name of Jesus. 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 Over the territory of Enugu we decree that everything that is not of God we use this meeting as a point of contact to speak to the east of the Niger. Hear the word of the Lord. We decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead there must be peace in your region. Everything that represents violence, everything that represents bloodshed, everything that represents... Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist 
by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you